I bet you wonder how I got here. Probably thinking, I had no idea you could fail at this part. Believe me, pal, I was right there with you. But I'm starting to get ahead of myself. Let's rewind to the start of the story. Chaos is a fickle creature. They try their damnedest to muck with our crazy world. Now, I thought it would be a good idea to harness this power, wield it to become a legend of Night City. But when you gaze into the abyss, it gazes back, and Chaos, well, it had a plan for me. This challenge run was fashioned from Chaos's plan. Each time I kill or incapacitate an enemy, I will receive a random weapon. Can I beat Cyberpunk 2077 with Chaos's arsenal? So enough philosophy, let's get down to brass tacks, the rules. Again, we'll be playing on the hardest difficulty because that's the spice of life, I guess. Second, I cannot use stealth, since that gives me weapons in unfun ways. Third, I am limiting my use of cyberware weapons to just the gorilla arms, since fists are in the weapon pool. Fourth, we are shooting for the Aldecaldo's ending this time, which will require completing the Pan Am questline. And for the fifth and final rule, I'm not going to be using quick hacks because this is a weapon randomizer, not a quick hack randomizer, and that would just make the game annoying. This mod, created by yours truly, gives you a random weapon whenever you kill or incapacitate an enemy. All weapons are removed from my inventory when I get a new kill. Due to limitations of Cyberpunk, I will sometimes receive just fists or will have a weapon that stays around because it's a quest item. Weapons are always scaled around the player's current level to prevent getting weapons that do too much damage or too little damage. Also, sometimes people at nearby car crashes will cause weapon switches because incapacitations are hard to attribute to the player. No one said I was a perfect modder. It just has to work, mostly. To make this even more fun, I have removed weapons from the loot pool, shops, and from enemy drops. During modding, I actually planned to replace all the guns with boots. However, it didn't really work out, and sadly, I had to remove the boots. It really sucks. Uh, it would have been uh, great to have some boots. It would have been awesome. I also may have accidentally removed grenades from the loot pool, so there's little to no kaboom this time. After the sunset on our cool dude, Gordon Freeman, it's time for Alex Vance to shine in the sun. Gordon would be proud. She is a nomad of the waste, and in this case, an agent of chaos. She needs no introduction, really, which is why I skipped the intro. See what I did there? Wink. Once in Night City, it's time to start build crafting. The build will consist of very general upgrades to body, technical, and reflexes. This is so I can get damage upgrades for each weapon type, as well as health and armor. I do dip back into cool a little bit, so I can use cold-blooded to help me in the early game. Let me tell you, having the ability to use the skill tree to its fullest is amazing. Plus, with such weapon variety, we'll be getting a good amount of experience and attribute points. The first cyberware upgrade I am shooting for is the Smart Link. It enables us to use smart weapons correctly. There are many smart weapons in the weapon pool, and without this, my aim is much worse than normal. It's still pretty bad. Luckily, you get a free Smart Link after Act 1. So I guess we come once again to the montage section of the video. Man, I need to come up with a better format. Barbara, can you write that one down for me? Till it is done. We meet again.
Well, we are back where we started the story. This time we get across the dam instead of off of it. This leads us on to the main meat of the game. So one major issue with this run is that we don't make a lot of money. And that's because we're not selling guns off of enemies. This means we gotta spend a lot of time grinding when we could just be playing the game, which is kind of boring. And that's kind of how my last run went, so I'd rather avoid that. And we really need money for the next upgrade, which is the Gorilla Arms. This will help when our only weapons are fists and Brooklyn Rage! It also helps solve our cash issue, as I can dominate the Beat on the Brat questline. So while we wait for some money, we might as well continue the main story. Before anything, we go to meet with Wakako and get our free smart link. Then it's time to help Punching Judy and find Evelyn. Clouds becomes a bit chaotic with the aggressive style of the run, but at least I don't have to worry about sneaking a weapon in, right? The scav hideout is a bit tricky, but eventually Lady Luck blows me a kiss and I make it through. For a bunch of videographers, these guys really packed a punch. While I wait for the Voodoo Boys quest line to mature, it's time to meet Pan Am and get the ball rolling on the ending. Nash's den proves a tricky area again, but I show his gang who's boss. We then secure Hellman and I grab a bite to eat with Takamura to hash out his quest line. Again, this is mostly set up so I can wait for him to do his stuff while I tackle the main quest line. Also, I learned that sometimes this can happen when you get stuck in the middle of combat. Also, before I forget, Alex needs an outfit too. Gordon can't have all the fun. With our new drip, it's time to finish the Voodoo Boys quest line and meet all. The GIM is the major hurdle here. Without stealth, it proves very challenging, especially with some bad luck. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Attention shoppers, half off all weapons for the holidays. Come on down and satisfy the animal in your life. This is really an advertisement for why we wanted the smart link right here. We 
the animal boss is also very tough. We got a very bad weapon to face her with. I'm going to mostly skip this part because it was kind of boring and uh, it took so long I ran out of ammo. So that was fun. With her out of the way, we side with Netwatch this time since I want to get rid of the Voodoo Boys and we relive Johnny's memory. I know I showed some clips already, but yes, Johnny's weapons are also randomized. I may have forgotten about the Placid boss fight if you don't go with the Voodoo Boys. So yeah, lots of cowering later, and we finally get out of Sunday School. We finally secured enough cash for the grill arms, and now we can punch our way to the bank, or whoever we can punch to get money. Pan Am needs our help next, so we help her save Saul. You think murder, think Marcus Munitions. Things are starting to go pretty well combat-wise. Glad to see the build's working. The getaway is a bit odd because uh, they gave us a shotgun. <laughs> that was interesting. Takamura gets back to us and it's time to hack our parade float. Now normally it's pretty easy with stealth. This took some time without it, but again, the build was showing that it actually was working. Although, Lady Luck was also there to help. Probably more on the luck side. P probably. With the float hacked, it was time to watch the parade, and I guess also kill kill some people. Sometimes I wish I could just sit back and enjoy. The Oda fight is quite silly since it gives us fists, but with the gorilla arms, it's not that bad. We then save Takamura this time, and Hanako agrees to help us. And with that, the main story is pretty much done. It's just a matter of finishing Pan Am's quest line, so I guess hit the music?
the Elder Caldos become our family, and it's time to start the end times. A and just to be clear, I did train up a lot between quests. I just didn't show it. So uh, we're much more prepared this time than last time. So for the noobs among us, the Aldecado's ending basically has you reenact Ocean's 13 and drill into the basement of Arasaka Tower. Getting into the tower wasn't as much of an issue this time. While we did get some silly weapons, our survivability was quite high at this point. Inside the tower, we fight our way to Smasher. Double kill. Triple kill. Overkill. Kill Tacular. Kill Trocity. Kill him in jar. Poor Saul gets his melon squished, and it's up to Pan Am and I to defeat him. However, Liddy Luck wanted to play a joke on us, so uh, I'll let the footage speak for itself. On God, you mangy cur! Smasher experiences the fist that the game kept giving us, and with that, we've completed Cyberpunk 2077 using Chaos's Arsenal. I will say this run was much easier than the previous one, but it was such a blast. It took me about 16 hours, and I estimate I went through about 900 weapons. Mind you, I didn't count, and my estimation skills are somewhat questionable. I'm including the mod files in the description if you guys want to try it out. Chaos's plan for us didn't shake out the way they thought and we managed to keep chaos at bay. I hope you guys enjoyed the run, and I will see you next time.